Hey divers, Alec Pierce, uh, Tech Tips. Here I am back again and we're going to talk about one of the most sophisticated pieces of equipment a diver will ever own. Fins. Yeah, you may laugh about that, but it actually is quite true. Modern fins are, are pretty neat. Long, long time ago, in an old science and mechanics magazine, there were plans for making your own fins. Yeah, thin piece of plywood, some canvas glue and everything else to hinge on them. Anyway, long time ago. Now fins are um, almost entirely synthetic. A little bit of rubber in them and uh, they look beautiful. And here's a typical fin. I want to talk about some different types of fins and explain some differences between them. Now here's a pretty typical fin. Okay, it has a foot pocket, big foot pocket like this. That's good. Your foot goes in here and it has a strap. Now this has one of those new spring straps. You see, it's called a spring strap because there's a spring in there. Yeah, one of the few names in scuba that actually is logical. Spring strap, you grab this and pull it out and so you don't have to adjust the strap. That's kind of neat. Nice pocket. And then it has a blade and the blade has a rib on each side. You see the rib that sticks up and, and I'm going to flip it over like this because this is the way it's on your foot. Now, some people ask me, how come my fin doesn't lay flat? It's got a bend in it. It's supposed to, because you can picture your foot goes in here like this. You see, your foot doesn't go straight out from your leg like this. If it did, the fin wouldn't have to be bent if your foot went straight out. But your foot doesn't. Your foot's like this on the end of your foot. You understand? So your foot's like that, you see? Now, if it's like that, you want the blade to be flat. It is. Hence the bend. So the blade is flat. So now what happens? Up you come on your recovery stroke, and then hard down on your power stroke up on recovery hard that's the way this is called finning yeah, it's pretty simple right what are the features that are important reasonably stiff blade reasonably large blade the size of the blade by the way just so you know is related to your foot size so if you get a size seven either size seven foot so the foot pocket is small guess what the blade will be smaller if you have a size 12 foot like this one the blade will be bigger yeah, well, it's, you know, there's some logic to that. Uh, the only time it becomes a problem is when you have a very strong uh, person, very energetic and very strong person who has a very small foot, because then they tend to have a small blade and they want more power. But anyway, other features you're looking for, fairly soft foot pocket. See, this upper part is fairly soft, because that stretches when your foot goes in there. This is what kind of holds your foot in there. But the bottom needs to be quite solid, you see? And very important, you notice this bottom, what we call the platform, the platform goes from your toes right back almost to your heels. Heel curls up. This is almost to your heel. This has to come halfway back along your foot. If it doesn't, if this is your foot. If it, the platform doesn't come halfway back, as I say, it stops halfway. Every time you kick, your foot bends like this, right in the middle. You can just imagine. So your toes bend down in the middle of your foot. After a while, your foot is killing you. So the platform needs to come right up almost to your heel, sometimes to the heel. Okay, solid platform. Other than that, choose a style that you like. This particular fin is yellow, has some stripes on it. I like it. It's a good fin. Everybody's a little bit different. You notice, by the way, it has three holes in it. This is not uncommon. These holes, vents, whatever you want to call them, jets, make up a name, have been around since the late 50s. Uh, U.S. divers or ski repro, there's an argument as to who first had these. Whether it was a rocket fins from U.S. divers or the jet fins from ski repro. I don't know who first had them. One of those two first had them. And they said, oh, this is the best thing. Get these fins with jets. You'll swim like a dolphin. I could never find a difference. I sold thousands of them. I've used them all. I could never get a difference with them. In fact, logically, it doesn't make sense. If you're trying to push water back like that, so you go this way. Why would you put holes in the fin? Don't you want the fin to catch all the water? I, I never had much use for those holes, but it's a styling thing. That's entirely up to you. Now, let's go to a fin that came out just a little while ago, well, let's say 10 years ago at least, and was an innovative and going to uh, uh, change the sport of scuba diving. I've heard that a lot over the years. And that is this fin right here. It looks almost exactly the same. Nice foot pocket, okay, and stretch strap, spring strap again, nice platform. Everything looks really good. Nice big ribs on the side. In fact, these are really big ribs. What's with that? Oh, look at here, though. These ones are broken, Kevin. These don't work. I guess this is for a guy that's ambidextrous. <laughs> you can kick and recover at the same time. These are called split fins. Split fins. And just so you'll know, the concept here is simple. First of all, your recovery stroke doesn't change coming up. It's on your power stroke that the split concept can be an issue. On your power stroke, I'm going to have you look at the end of this fin like this, okay? On the power stroke, what happens as you come down, 
the fin's exactly the same. Water is supposed to go back like a jet engine. So you go this way. If you kick too hard, which people do, if you kick too hard, what happens is the fin opens up. The split opens up like this. And the water goes through the split. It doesn't go over the sides. The ribs on these are extra big. They're extra big for two reasons. They're extra big because as part of the split function, trying to keep the water between the ribs, they make the ribs bigger so the water is less likely to go over them. Water that goes over the side, not only is a wasted effort not doing anything, it'll actually slow you down. It's like the suction behind a bus or a, or a, a tractor transport on the highway. It'll actually suck you. This will actually slow the diver down. Any water that goes over the side, so you want to you know, stop that. So the big, big rib actually helps to keep the water inside the blade. The other reason for the big rib is since there's no support in here, you know, there's no, so the blade is not very good. They need the extra big rib to keep the shape of the fin, to keep it actually looking like a fin. If these are normal little blades, well, the fin would end up looking like this. You put it in your bag and pull it out, you'd have one of these pieces of spaghetti. So they're big ribs for two reasons, and they're both good reasons. Now, this was revolutionary, and uh, the research on it proved uh, to the manufacturers, uh, 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 anyway, to, to their uh, thoughts anyway, that this was excellent, and, and they used advertising to sell a lot of these fins. Again, I used them, sold a lot. I never found a lot of use for them, but they were pretty neat. There's a new fin on the market. Now, I don't want to particularly uh, name a brand. You know, I don't like naming brands. But this particular fin actually is very innovative, and it takes advantage of all the research of all the fins, all of these fins. Puts it all together in one package, and then, since it is a scuba pro fin, I let that slip. They spend a lot of money on research and testing and development, more than any other company, I'm sure. And so this fin has been tested in, uh, in, in an airflow chamber, although it was more like a water flow chamber. Same idea. They put this in and they pass water over it to see what's happening. And they can see all the currents and the eddies. They put dye in there and bubbles and they can see exactly what's happening to the water. They can actually have a foot in the water moving up and down through the water, so they can watch, the engineers can watch, well, what's that, fix that, and so on, until they have a fin that is as close to perfect as one can find. I like this fin, I'm currently using this fin. I like it for a number of reasons. Nice pocket, nice platform, right? Good and solid, soft on top, solid on the bottom. It has a stretch strap, not a spring strap. What do I mean? There's a difference, there's no spring in there. See, it's like a bungee cord. Very, very tough bungee cord. It'll stand up the salt water, don't worry. Sold hundreds of these and used mine for years. Never had a problem with these bungee cords. Same idea, but without the springs. The springs, after a while, got to be a bit of a nuisance. They would catch things and, and of course, being steel, even though they're stainless steel, they, they, they can corrode. These are excellent. And if they do break, they're cheap to repair. Let's look at the fin action and see what's innovative. First of all, I don't know if you can see right down there, Kevin. Can you see right down the fin and right at the back? You notice that right from here, your foot, the full length of the fin is a flat surface. That's right. With this fin, normally the blade, of course, as with this fin, is surface, but so is your foot. So the blade is a foot long, but you have about seven inches of foot pocket that's all part of the blade. A lot more fin without increasing the size. Secondly, this fin is really light, which I love. I'm an old man, first of all. And if you've been watching my videos at all, you know that people will say, I don't care if my fins are heavy because they're light in the water. Not true. If you watch some of my videos, I forget which one it was a while ago, I explained that inertia and momentum add a lot to the effort. And a big heavy fin requires a lot more effort to move. I don't care if they're neutral or not, got nothing to do with it. So this fin is very light. It's also light for travel, which I like, so in the bag, but boom, off I go. But let's look at the technical features. First of all, let me point out something that's pretty obvious. This little hole here, great. They put that in there specifically so you could hammer a nail in the wall of the garage and hang your fins up. No. <laughs> That little hole was part of that water tunnel experience. In the testing, one of the engineers noticed at the tip there was some turbulence. Turbulence means the water is coming down and then turning around and coming back. Not good for efficiency. So what did they do? Exactly. They put that little channel and hole in there. So now all the water coming off the fin, off the bottom, off the blade, all the water is going straight back. No turbulence. 
That's how sophisticated this fin is. They also put wingtips. Can you see the wingtips on here? It looks like a, is it a 737? I think it's a 737 wingtips. Another attempt to keep the water on the blade. If water pours off the edges of the blade, it slows you down. So they're keeping the water on the blade. You know, the ribs are very distinct. Four ribs plus the wingtips. So all the water that you're pushing back was off the end of the blade. It's the way you want it. Now what about you strong guys? Young people with big strong legs and, and you're showing off a little bit, strong current or something maybe, and you kick too hard. With almost anything, if you kick too hard, the blade will bend sideways or blade this bend this way and the effort you put in simply doesn't come out. Well, of course that happens to any, any fin, including this one, but watch right here. Can you see nice and close here, Kevin? Look at those slots. You see them? Now watch what happens. I'm going to start my power stroke. Down we go. And I'm going to put lots of power into it. Oh, too much, too much, too much. Can you see what's happening there? You see the close up? Now, when you get to the bottom of your power stroke, watch what happens. I stop to begin my recovery stroke. So if you fin too hard with this fin, some of that effort is saved by the bending of the blade right here. It's saved up until you get to the end of that power stroke, at which time that effort you put in, too much effort, granted, but at least it's not wasted. Some of it comes back in extra snap. Pretty slick, huh? So, fins are simple. Piece of wood strapped to your foot, essentially. But are they ever getting sophisticated? Next time, and I'm sure there's other models similar to this Nova. It's not, it's not uh, restricted just to the Scuba Pro Nova fin. But next time you're in a dive store, ask them or go online and ask about the Scuba Pro Nova fin. I think it's the most sophisticated. I'm really enjoying it. And certainly the features are awfully nice. Anyway, some of you guys were asking about split fins and other kinds of fins. I've, I've, uh, <laughs> Kevin's trying to give me a message there. He's squatting on the floor. I'm not sure what that means. Uh, enough of this. <laughs> and, uh, so there is, there are some questions answered. I hope you enjoyed that. Now I did want to mention to you another thing. I know a lot of you live in the country and all kinds of places around the world, doesn't matter where it is. I am having so much fun with my Ali Pierce Scuba. I started another channel. We live in the country. Diana, my beautiful wife and I live in the country. Have for a long time. So I started a new channel called Ali Pierce at the ranch. That's right. And if you live in the country at all and you're interested in chickens and cattle or, 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 or building things outside or tractors or ATVs or fences or gates or horses or anything to do with living in the country. All there's a wide range of topics about living in the country. Look up Alec Pierce at the ranch and you might find something interesting in there. Just got started. Kevin and I have only got about a half a dozen or so videos, but it's coming along and maybe you'll see something in there that's of interest to you too. Anyway, there you go. Split fins, good, bad, and the ugly, and other kinds of fins. I hope there's something in there that maybe you picked up as a bit of extra information. Talk to you soon. Alec Pierce, Tech Tips.